Greetings everyone, this is non-expert here back again with another video. Today we are going to be solving problem number 45 and the difficulty it's been related at is easy. This problem was asked by 2 Sigma and I've seen this question being asked as an ISPO question in a lot of interviews as well. Cool, so let's just check out the problem description. So using a function rand 5 that returns an integer from 1 to 5 inclusive with uniform probability, implement a function rand 7 that returns an integer from 1 to 7. Uh, basically, you have a rand 5 function which returns an integer uh, from 1 to 5 and using that function you need, you need to implement a rand 7 function which needs to return numbers from 1 to 7 with uniform probability. Cool. So fortunately, we were able to find a similar problem on lead code and the name of the problem is implement rand 10 using rand 7. Uh, do note over here, we are going to be implementing rand 10 uh, using the rand 7 function. Uh, and not implement when using the rand 5 function. Although it's a little different, um, it's really the same question because the properties that you'll be using in order to solve this question are exactly the same. Again, I would sort of urge you to pause this video and check out the link given in the description below and try solving this problem on your own. Cool, so let's just get down to it. So if you're not really too sure on how to solve this problem, that's quite all right. Um, to be very honest, this is not really a coding coding problem. It's more like a geometric distribution problem. And if you're not really too sure <coughs> what geometric distribution is, that's quite all right if you're not familiar with its properties. Uh, but today, there are basically three properties or three rules rather that you need to know in order for you to solve this problem. And they're pretty easy to understand as well. The first rule that we'll be using today is basically an approach called expanding a zero-based random. Uh, let me try explaining this using an example. So let's just say that you have a function as rand 10, which returns number from 0 to 9. Do note over here that I'm saying 0 to 9 and not 1 to 10. So you have a function rand 10, which returns numbers with uniform probability from 0 to 9. And you need to implement a rand 100 function. Now the way to sort of go about it is you can sort of use the rand 10 function in order for you to generate each digit. Most people would just suggest that hey what if I just do rand 10 and add it multiple times or rather add it 10, uh, you know, 10 times. Uh, that's not really the uh, problem with description because when you do that when you check out the uniform distribution it's not going to be uniformly distributed. Uh, or you can sort of think in this way that, you know, for you to get uh, the number 30, there would be multiple iterations, um, multiple combinations, and that will just screw up your entire probability, right? It will not be uniformly distributed. So, basically, RAND 100 obviously needs to return numbers from 0 to 99. And the way you can go about it is you can use the RAND 10 function in order to generate each digit. So, basically, you can do RAND 10 multiplied by 10 which could be at the 10th place and at the unit place you can just do 1 into rand 10. <clears throat> Again, you don't really need this one. That's quite all right. You can just do plus rand 10. And again, all you're, all you're doing is you're just, you know, calling the rand 10 function in order for you to generate each digit. This would be at the unit place and this would be at the 10th place. Again, if you didn't understand it, take this example, for instance, like if you want to implement RAND 1000. So you need a number on the 100th place, so that will be 100 into RAND 10. You'll need one at the 10th place, which will be RAND 10. And also you'll need one at the units place. And that's basically go about it. You know, in order, if you sort of use this approach, you're multiplying your value with 10. And this 100 can also be denoted as 10 into 10. So that's the way you sort of go about the distribution. And when you do this, but sort of whenever you use this approach, what happens is you're not, you know, uh, screwing up your uniform probability. It's still uniformly distributed, and then you can move forward. Cool. So now one thing which is more important for us to understand is because we've been given functions which return a number from 1 to x. For example, over here in this problem description, you have been given rank 7 which returns a random integer from 1 to 7. So can we use the same approach in order for us to implement um, RAND 100? So let's just take the RAND 100 example, and let's just say RAND 10 was now using um, 
<clears throat> a value from 1 to 10 right just to get a little bit more semblance with the problem description so if rank 10 is returning a number from 1 to 10 can we implement rank 100 using the same formula and i'll just copy paste this formula and to be very honest with you that's not really possible and the reason for that is is basically if you sort of you know jot it out the total probability that you'll be getting or the numbers that you'll be getting would be from 2 to 101 and the reason for that is you know um, rank 10 can it's basically if you, you can try to do this on your own but these would be the numbers that you will get um, but what's more important is how, how can we really you know change this equation in order for us to um, you know use the approach for converting it from 1 to 10 the, you know, this entire thing is very simple. From a one-based random approach, we can just get you can just convert it to a zero-based random probability. And the way to do that is just by subtracting minus one to the function which is there. So basically, you are just converting this rank in function to get your value from zero to nine. And that's what we are going to use when whenever we have values from one to ten, right? So that's our first formulation. The next two formulations are actually pretty easy to understand. Um, the first one is basically discard and roll again property. So let's just take another example and let's just take a quick example. Let's just say that you have a six sided die or dice or whatever and you have numbers from one to six over here, right? Now what you want to do is you want to convert this die into a coin distribution. Basically you want to convert it to get a head or a tail. Now the way to do that, there are multiple ways of doing this, but one way to do this is by basically saying that, hey, if I have one, you give me head, if it's two, then you return tails, and if it's anything else, you roll, roll the dice again. Again, the reason for that is basically the, you know, the head and tail distribution is 50-50, and you don't really need to worry about the 50-50 distribution. What you need to worry about is that they uniformly distributed, that both of them have the equal probability of coming up. So the same thing sort of applies to one, one would have the same probability of coming up as well as two and anything else which comes in you just roll the dice again and the last property i'm not really too sure what the name of the property is let's just call, call it the mapping rule is basically what we'll just take the same example that you have a six-sided die and you want to convert it into a coin distribution so what you can do is you can say hey if you get one comma two comma three that could be a hit and if you have four comma five comma six that could basically be your tails. And these are all the properties that we'll, that we'll be using in order for us to you know, move forward. So again, the first thing that we need to do is basically you'll say, hey, rank seven needs to be converted from a one-based probability. And if you don't know what one-based probability is, basically you start from one to some x number. So you need to convert this into a zero to six so that we can you know uh, give a formulation as this. And then basically we can move forward. Oh, and one other property which I sort of forgot to mention is basically if you have a rank 10, you can only multiply it with multiples of 10 and move forward from there. So again, using these three concepts, all you have to do is, and we can sort of jot these steps down. Let's just write them as steps. Um, the first step is basically convert it to a zero beast random seven, right? That's the first thing that we need to do. Then basically we are going to be computing something called as rank 49. And rank 49 is basically because you can do 7 into 7 and that will be the same distribution. So you'll be converting it as rank 7 minus 1 plus rank 7 oops, plus rank 7 minus 1. And again, this, this is the exact same thing that we've computed over here. Um, and that's, that's it. Um, so we have a rank 49 and then what we're going to do is we're going to use a roll again property and what we're going to do is since we need to convert it to 10 we're going to look for any multiple of 10. So a multiple of 10 could be 40 and that could be our limit. So whenever you get a value let's just say x if it's greater than or equal to 40 you basically roll again and if it's not then you can just do a modulus on f and just move forward from there. Uh, again, it's pretty tricky to understand, but let's just try implementing this. I'll sort of take these steps out because they will just cover up my screen. And uh, let's just, you know, take this piece out as well. And let's just do this implementation. The implementation is actually pretty small now. 
because we've come up with an approach so we're just going to compute a rank 40 and we can just you know give it some number let's just give it an infinite number for now and what we'll say is, uh, is basically we need to run a loop till rank 40 is greater than or equal to 40 right and the reason for that is basically we want distribution from 0 to 39 uh, and when we do this when we do this entire approach you know basically the loop will keep on running till rank 40 is not computed properly and now we just put a reinitialization of rank 40 and we just say rank 40 is basically going to be equal to the function that we had defined before so since the probability is 7 um, we're going to do 7 into rank 7 so rank 7 minus 1 converting it to a zero base distribution and also for the next digit rank 7 minus 1 and what's going to happen is rank 40 is this loop is going to keep on running till rank 40 comes between 0 to 39 and when that happens all we need to do is we just need to return the probability accordingly so we'll do a quick modulus of 10 because we need to you know, divide by 10 and then we just add with 1 the reason why we're adding it 1 is only because we need it from uh, 1 to 10 and not from 0 to 9 and this is the entire approach uh, you know there's nothing more here to it and if you didn't understand what this is this is basically uh, we are just folding our zero base random 40 to one base uh, random 10 and then we're moving forward from there cool so let's just try running this and hopefully this should run fine cool and awesome you can see that's running fine um, it's the same exact solution and the output is coming as the same um, if you don't get the output as saying that's quite all right, all you have to do is you just need to make sure that whatever number that you're generating, it has a uniform probability. And then you need to move forward from there. So this is running fine. Let's just submit the solution. Hopefully this should get submitted as well. And awesome you can see that's running fine um it's not taking any memory whatsoever because there's another approach which you could use which is i think rejection sampling uh, which uses a lot of memory and it's faster than 29 percent of solutions and I, I, you don't really need to worry about this too much because that's sort of relative on the type of question that you have if i try to submit this again you would see that it's coming with a different pro uh, you know different uh, or rather faster this thing as you can see it's 45 percent faster so you don't really need to worry about it so sort of dependent on the test cases but all in all, all you've been doing is you've just decided your few rules or properties that you have, and then you've just come up with your solution. And awesome, so that's it. If you have any comments or if you have any questions, you know, do leave it in the comment section below. I would love to handle any of your queries. And if you did like this video, do give a like and do subscribe to the channel. We are discussion over here, and we would love to have you on board with us. And if you've already subscribed, you're awesome. We all know it and have an awesome day. Thank you.